a lot of universities have rules that say if you're a non-matriculated student, if you're a non-degree seeking student, you don't get access to the courses until everyone else is done registering for their courses. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 326. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week. I get to answer your non-traditional pre-med questions that you get to ask. And we have a new way for you to ask those questions. If you dial 833-693-4279 and hit that button for the Old Pre-Meds Podcast, you can leave a voicemail recording that we can answer here on the podcast. We don't have many in store because this is a brand new way to ask questions. So if you want to make sure your question is asked relatively soon, go ask. Again, that's 833-693-4279. Our question today is a great one. It's from our archives that we have over at the old pre-meds forums at premedforums.com. But it's a really great question about about what to do as a non-traditional student. So as we jump in to our question today, I'll pull it up here one more time. Our student today says, I've been a longtime lurker of this forum and listener of the podcast. I'm 28 and finishing up my bachelor's degree in healthcare administration at the end of the year. I've worked in healthcare since high school, but always on the administrative side. I'm currently an office manager at a medical billing company. We have clients from all different specialties and coding their cases. It's given me insight into so many different areas of medicine. I've been interested in the clinical side of healthcare since high school, but doubted my abilities, so I never pursued it. My dad passed away last year of pancreatic cancer, and as cliche as it sounds, this was really what pushed me. He was always my cheerleader and really the one who got me to finally pursue my bachelor's degree. Because of him, I found an inner confidence to really push myself in school and realize that I am capable. I've been attempting to work out time to take sciences Uh, science courses at the California State University here in town, but with my work schedule, I've been having a hard time. As a non-matriculated student, I have last say-so for most of the biology and chem classes I could attend uh, are full before I get a chance. I have been toying with the idea of asking my employer to go part-time so I can attend these courses during the day. I have also been looking at post-bac programs that I could apply for next year. This would mean moving away from home and quitting my job, as none are local. But I just wanted to introduce myself and thank everyone for the helpful topics I've discovered on the forum and the podcast. So great question, and this is a very specific, an awesome, non-traditional question, right? Here's my work schedule, here's my class schedule, and there is a conflict, what do I do? And this student right now is doing a do-it-yourself post back, but it's conflicting with the work schedule. And this happens all the time. A lot of universities have rules that say if you're a non-matriculated student, if you're a non-degree seeking student, you don't get access to the courses until everyone else is done registering for their courses, which means it's very hard to take the courses that you need in a sequence that works for you because you as a non-traditional student, if you're especially taking sciences for the first time, there's a sequence to take them in so that knowledge is building on top of each other. And the undergraduate university doesn't really see you as a student that needs to take courses in a specific uh, sequence because you haven't matriculated and you're you're not degree seeking. So it doesn't really matter, right? They, they think it doesn't matter. You're just doing things for fun. And it makes it that much harder for you to get the courses that you need. And so there are a few options. Well, obviously the student is taking classes at the university. So do you need to move away to continue to take classes at the university? Or can you just quote unquote matriculate, right? Start at that school as a degree seeking student, take the classes that you need and go, sweet, peace out, I'm done, (laughs) right? There, there are lots of ways, and, and this question really points out the fact that students think black and white. They think, I can either continue to take classes at this local university, but only as a non-matriculated, non-degree-seeking student, and therefore I don't get first dibs on the courses that I need. 
Or I could completely go the opposite way, go into a post-bac program, probably spend a lot more money, move, quit my job, and, and it just seems like that is an extreme that do we really need that extreme? Or is there a happy medium where, yeah, you go part-time in your job, you enroll in the school as if you are going to get a second bachelor's degree because that's what you need, and then you've basically done what you need to do to get first dibs as best as possible on those courses that you need to fit the schedule, to fit your timeline, to fit everything else on your specific journey. Now, there are a lot of questions that are unanswered here in this question, and, and that is, well, what was your major before? Have you taken the science courses? Are you a record enhancer post -bac student, or are you a career changer post -bac student? And the difference between those two is, do you need to retake courses that you did poorly in, or are you taking these science courses for the first time new? And I think there's, there's a little bit of nuance, a little bit of difference there. If you are a record enhancer, then the question is, what are the courses that you're taking at the four-year university so that you can show enhancement, right? So that you're not just retaking Bs, you're taking higher level courses. And that's where post -bac programs come in very handy for career changers, because usually at post -bac programs, and not everyone, but at a lot of them, you're taking the undergraduate kind of 101 courses with the undergraduate schools kind of under the direction of a post -bac program. But a lot of times you're still, the classes that you're taking are the freshman biology, freshman chemistry. There's, there's no special post -bac class that you're taking. And so you just have to look at your specific situation, the scenario that you're in. Are you retaking those science courses? In which case you probably want to take higher division courses in, in which case you want to find the university, the institution that will allow you to take those upper division courses, or are you a career changer and you need to take the basic, the foundation stuff, the, the basic prereqs right from the beginning. And so that's a big difference is if you stay local, go part-time and, and, and enroll as a degree-seeking student again, right, a second degree, then can you take the courses that you need to show the academic achievement and academic ability that you're trying to show? Or do you need to move away because the, that local university just doesn't have what you specifically need? So there's a lot of nuance that's missing here. The other big nuance that's missing is financial aid, right? So a lot of times the government's like, hey, you already got a degree. We're not gonna pay for you to get a second degree. Or we're not gonna... No, obviously, I wish, right? The government's not paying for us for anything, but they're, we're, we're, we're not gonna loan you the money to get a second degree, so you're on your own. And post -bac programs run into that same issue, which is why a lot of students do uh, either SMPs or a master's level, quote unquote, post -bac, because the government assumes you're progressing in your career, and therefore they'll pay for that because it's master's level work, and not undergraduate level work. And so a lot of students will do master level work because that's what they can get financial aid for. So there's a big difference there uh, between undergrad and master's level coursework, depending on, again, financial aid status. So lots of nuance, uh, not a super straightforward question, but I just wanted to challenge the assumption that it was it was one or the other. And maybe the the staying local at the local university was an option with some changes in the thinking in terms of uh, registering for a second degree or, or something that will allow you to get what you need without disrupting your whole life of quitting and moving and all of that other stuff. So hopefully that was helpful. I do wanna take one second and talk about Blueprint MCAT, our sponsor here on the old pre-meds podcast. Did you know they have a free account over at blueprintmcat.com where you can get access to an amazing study planner tool to help you plan out your whole MCAT prep schedule. And we know life happens, especially as a non-traditional student. Your, your kids uh, come home sick from school. You had a whole day planned of, of content that you were gonna study. And so you, you go to your calendar, you go to the study planner tool, you click and you drag that stuff over into the next day or next two days so that you can keep on track 
to get the score you need on your MCAT. Go to Blueprint MCAT today, blueprintmcat.com, to schedule and get that free stu uh, study planner tool right now. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.